Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Today, I just wanted to do a really short video, uh, kind of answering a question that I know that I had when I got into working on guitars when I was a teenager, um, which is, what is this white powdery stuff that's on the inside of the guitar? Um, you might notice when you open up an electric guitar that, um, you know, almost universally, they have, you know, this yellowish white powder kind of caked in there. And, um, you know, uh, you might have asked yourself, well, what is that stuff? Well, let me show you something. So over here I have my buffing wheel and um, buffing compound that goes with that wheel. And uh, you might notice that uh, there's a piece of cardboard here behind it. And that piece of cardboard kind of is covered with a bunch of crud. Well, that crud is the, uh, is the buffing compound that has been ejected off of this wheel while I've been polishing stuff like guitar finishes and uh, frets. Um, I don't do frets on this wheel, but I do frets on the other one. Um, and uh, you'll notice that it's the same color as the stuff that you find on the inside of the guitar. Well, that's because this is the exact same stuff. So when you're polishing out a guitar, what'll happen is, is that this wheel will kind of grab hold of those corners, especially around like the electronics bay and everything. And it will just kind of eject that uh, compound in there kind of the same way that it ejects it onto this uh, cardboard shield here. And uh, what happens is that um, you know, during the process of polishing, um, you know, different kinds of liquids will be involved. Oftentimes guitars that go over to the buffing wheel have just come over from wet sanding. Um, what happens with guitar polishing is that guitars are typically wet sanded uh, down to a very, very fine grit, like 1500 grit or 2000 grit in some cases, and uh, then taken to the buffing wheel, which then buffs out all of those, uh, all of those very fine sanding scratches. And then further, um, what will happen is on a bench, a lot of times something like this will be used, which is a hand polishing compound, which goes even finer than this wheel here. And those uh, liquids being present will cause this stuff to kind of cake into the uh, into the electronics bay of the guitar. Um, so that's essentially what you're seeing is you're seeing this uh, yellowish uh, buffing compound in most cases. But there are other things uh, that I should probably also talk about. So let me go ahead and go back to the guitar and I'll, I'll show you something else. All right, so what I have here in my hand is just uh, two potentiometers. These are the things inside your guitar that uh, make the volume go up or down or make the tone go up and down. Um, this is the component that makes that happen, um, just in case somebody didn't know what they're looking at. Um, and one of these is clearly used. You can see a solder joint that was on this one, and this one over here is new. And what I want you to notice is that uh, if you look at the backs of these, the, the one that's new is pretty shiny relative to the one that's old. And the one that's old has kind of a weird sort of white film on it. Um, well, that white film is zinc oxide. Now, there's a phenomenon that's uh, known. You can look this up. It uh, occurs when you ground, uh, when you electrically ground a surface that contains zinc. Uh, what happens is that uh, that uh, the zinc in that surface will tend to oxidize. Now, since we ground the backs of pots and you know some other components uh, in in the guitar to like a, a plate like this, um, and these plates oftentimes are made out of pot metal, um, which contains zinc. Um, this uh, zinc will oftentimes kind of uh, oxidize and sometimes create, uh, you know, these crystalline kind of structures of, of zinc oxide that, that can sometimes kind of break off and form kind of a white powder that you'll find down in the electronics bay. Sometimes you'll find it on the trim claw and other places. And on older guitars, especially when things have had a real long time to sit and kind of build that stuff up, that stuff will kind of break off and it'll get into the electronics bay and, and uh, become kind of a white powder that's present in those environments. Um, now, uh, when I say pot metal, uh, pot metal doesn't mean that we make pots out of that metal. Uh, pot metal means something else. Um, it just happens to be that, um, I'm showing you a potentiometer here, but it tends to be that if you see any kind of like non-conductive plate on any of these components, that, that that tends to be what it's made out of. And pot metal is, is really just kind of a, a catch-all term that we use for, you know, kind of cheap metals that are made out of kind of an amalgamation of like kind of whatever was laying around. Um, at least that's as far as I know what it is. I'm not a metallurgist. Somebody's probably going to correct me in the comments here and tell me that there's some specific formulation or whatever. But 
Um, I do know that pot metal usually contains zinc, and that zinc oxidizing is what creates that white powder. Now, the difference between this and the buffing compound is that this stuff here really is going to look very white. Um, sometimes it'll have a bit of a grayish hue to it. And a lot of times, um, you know, when you pull up the electronics in that guitar, you'll see it kind of developing a crust around all of these grounded surfaces. And so that's what's the, that's uh, what's kind of causing that more whitish stuff that you find in electronics bays and, and stuff like that. Um, now as far as like why this might be relevant to somebody, uh, if you're going to go in here and you're going to use shielding tape, on the inside of a guitar. Um, this stuff really, uh, you know, as most powders do, doesn't stick well to the back of tape. And so it's a good idea to kind of go in there and um, clean this stuff up the best that you can before uh, going in there and, uh, and trying to apply tape to it, especially if it's really caked on, you know, deep like this. I don't recommend shielding this output jack cavity and strats, um, but, you know, just kind of showing you and where that is. Um, what I'll usually do is I'll take a little bit of naphtha and I'll just kind of, you know, let it kind of pool in there and I'll use a rag and kind of wipe in little upward strokes like that and take care of it that way. You can also use a Q-tip or pretty much anything. Uh, naphtha will work, guitar polish will work. Uh, you just basically kind of want to avoid using anything like um, lacquer thinner or acetone that may damage the finish of the guitar or water, which may cause the, which may get into the wood somehow and um, kind of cause the stuff to swell underneath the finish. And then you've got all kinds of weird problems to deal with. But either one of those two things will work, um, you know, if used in, in you know, decent, decently small amounts. The nice thing about the naphtha is just that it doesn't really hurt guitar finishes and you can kind of go in there and just, you know, kind of lay it down. This stuff also does a particularly good job of, of dissolving, um, you know, kind of the caked on formations that that, um, that that buffing compound creates. And so, you know, that that's also helpful. But um, really, other than going in here and doing shielding, this stuff really doesn't hurt much. Um, the reason that they leave it in is because as you're seeing, this takes a little bit of extra effort to go in and, and remove. And since it doesn't cause any problems typically with the functioning of the guitar, um, you know, it's it's just time that's that they're that that doesn't have to be spent on the assembly line, kind of putting together a guitar. And since time is money, uh, oftentimes, you know, if something's not a problem, you know, you don't worry about it. If something's not broke, you don't fix it, right? So that's kind of why you find this stuff, you know, still in the guitar. It's just that it, it typically doesn't cause problems. Uh, not to say that, like I, you know, I, theoretically, like it couldn't get into your pots and cause them to get dirty or something like that. But it, it typically doesn't. Typically, if this stuff is caked in, it's it's pretty content to stay caked in and just and just kind of be there as evidenced as you will find when you go in to remove the stuff that that, that doesn't really like to move once you know once it's there so um that's kind of that's kind of the the deal with uh, these various powders that you'll find inside a guitar so anyway um this has been drew jones of drew's guitar shop in seattle washington um if you enjoyed this video and you found it particularly helpful and want to kick me a few bucks there's a link to my ko-fi and my patreon in the description of the video um, I also have a lot more videos like this on my channel, so feel free to browse my catalog and, you know, you might find something in there that's also helpful to you. Um, and definitely link this around to friends who you uh, think might be interested in this kind of stuff. Um, also in the description of this video, you will find a link to my reverb page where I sell some instruments and also... Uh, my website where you'll find my contact information as well as my pricing guide for doing repair work. On that page you will also find a, uh, a page that I wrote up uh, to uh, kind of describe some uh, good uh, care and feeding stuff related to uh, uh, stringed instruments and if you are here watching this video I'm guessing that you have a few stringed instruments laying around that you are uh, caring for so it might be a good thing to read for you. So anyway um, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Thanks for watching.